Well, we've had a great first half of the program already with Pastor Peter's teaching on the truth about you. And in this next part of the program, we are privileged to have uh, two very special guests, uh, Vincent and Phoebe Samuels. Welcome to the program today, Vincent. Thank we you, have Nathan, Phoebe, as well. Thank, Thank you, you for here. And you are the founders of uh, Love Thy Neighbor International. That's true. That's right. And so tell us about it. What is, love? first of all, before we get your actual testimony, which is pretty phenomenal, what is Love Thy Neighbor International? Love, love Thy Neighbor International is um, an organization which is primarily established to, to help out the uh, do something tangible for the persecuted Christians. It's a not-for-profit, it's, a, it's an NGO, and uh, primarily it is going to work for the economic, for the education, for the health care, and uh, similar opportunities for the development of those persecuted Christians in Pakistan, however, for the religious freedom and for the uh, human rights all over the world we want to hmm. promote. Just go ahead. I see your wife wants to jump Just in. Just want to add that uh, this is a commandment from our Lord. Love thy neighbor as yourself. And that was the basis for establishing this NGO. And so you've, you've mentioned the, the primary outreach is in Pakistan, is that right? Yes, we have uh, started in Pakistan. And, and uh, I want to go back to what uh, Phoebe was saying about, it's in Matthew 25, 31 to 46, when, when the Son of Man will come back on, in his glory with the angels, he's going to sit on, on his throne, and then he's going to separate one from the other, and then he's going to talk to those on the right side, and he's, he's going to ask that, you know, you were the one when I was hungry, you, mm. you, feed it, you gave me you food, fed, yeah. and you were thirsty, when I was thirsty, you gave me it. So, so that's where he is, you know, uh, just previously uh, in the message, uh, Pastor Youngren was talking about that, yes, we are in Christ and he lives in me. And even you, Nathan, mentioned that we have to let Christ begin, begin us. Mm. So the Christ is over there in us as well. Ephesians as well, uh, sorry, Galatians 2.20, it's not me um, who lives, but it's the Christ, Christ who lives, lives in, in us. In Amen. Us. So now, that's why we are trying to reach out to the body of Christ over mm -hmm. there. Through this now tell us about, for the viewers at home, I mean, I've had the privilege of being in Pakistan, uh, Karachi, but, uh, and Pastor Peter has been all over, but um, for the viewers at home, tell us about the lives of the persecuted Christians. That's who you're helping. And so to give us a heart for this, tell us about, either one jump in, mm -hmm. but the plight of the persecuted Christian uh, in Pakistan. Well, the number of uh, uh, Christian community in Pakistan varies from 12 million to 15 million. 15 million. And the total size of the country is? Is less than Ontario. So the, the size, but the population? Size of the population is 180 million. So 180 million, and, and then you have and about 12 to 12 15, to 15 million, million Christians. Are Christians. Yeah. Okay. And uh, these Christians are, most of them are from a very poor background. Mm. And they, are, they have very little education, less than 7%. Mm. And and why, the, is that, why is that? I, I think I know why, but I want you to explain uh, to the viewer at home. Well, it is, it is because overall as well in the general population, the education is 13%. But for a Christian community, it's less than 7%. Mm. Whereas in the beginning, when Pakistan was created, all the schools, all the educational system was Christian. 57% of the population was educated by the Christians. Mm. But as the things changed, and in 70s, when um, Christian educational institutions were taken by the government, they, everything was gone. Hmm. Christians were unable to continue their education. Hmm. And now the thing is this, they are hardly educated, can't read Bible, can't read, uh, can't uh, have job. Hmm. So they need the... Uh, New gen we need a new generation of Christians mm. who can read Bible, who can understand Christianity. And on top of that, when you don't have that basic standing of your faith, we are hearing every week eight to ten Christians converting 
and many many families are forced to be converted hmm well that's sad so how is how is loving uh, love thy neighbor how are you uh, helping change this well i'm going to actually uh, a little more uh, you, you are talking about the situation of, mm -hmm. of uh, Christians actually mm -hmm. and I'm going to further a little bit elaborate that yes she, she was talking about um, um, the education level or l literacy rate amongst the Christians the other few of the things which are really impacting even in big cities is that uh, we just had a uh, survey by the Lahore School of Economics and they did a study on a Christian population just near Lahore it's about a hundred thousand Christians living in one neighborhood, they found out that there is 45% unemployment and two thirds of the families, they have at least one drug addict in the family. Hmm. So we have a really, a terrible, really dire situation at the present time happening over there. So I think that's what, that was one of the reason that we felt that, and, and actually God, they, he really showed us that this is the way we need to do. And we really thank you I mean, just now we were hearing about the 200 years of the missionary work in, in that area or, or around the world. Mm. Let me tell you, we are so grateful what Peter Youngren uh, pastor is doing mm -hmm. and what you as a ministry are doing. But now we have to do um, this side of the uh, equation as well. Yes, the church is being established. That's great. But now we need to strengthen them. We need to feed them. We need to educate them we need mm. to take care of them so that they continue to grow and be uh, the Christians we need mm -hmm. over there. so in that area there was 45 percent on that's high unemployment that's a very high unemployment. yeah so tell, I know I think you're founding schools and whatnot but I want you to tell me rather than because I read your tell the yeah. viewer so, yeah. what, is, so what are you doing to help them so so at this time uh, what we decided just like what the missionary did, did um, starting 200 years ago mm. But in 70, the situation was turned, the tables were turned on the Christians in Pakistan. And now we needed to do the same missionary work, what was done 200 years ago. So as families, what we start, started is that we said, okay, let's start with the uh, developing this new generation of Christians, because whatever is the grown-ups, they are dealing with their situation. So we are going to start a primary school for now, uh, we already have secured the land, there's a small building on it, and we are working on making an, uh, constructing a school on it. Within the same school building, we are also planning to have a, a, a clinic, a health clinic, where we are going to have a doctor, if not every day, at least a couple of days a week, will come and see how the nurses will be available mm. uh, throughout the week. Uh, similarly, now that, uh, that, that uh, project will not only um, create the new generation we are talking about, but at the same time, uh, they will also provide some teaching opportunities, uh, job opportunities, similarly for nurses, for um, people around who are going to be supporting that school. So, so all that is, is it has a multi-pronged uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. purpose, and that's going to happen. In which area are you in? Um, uh, we are starting in near that uh, that we are starting in that hundred thousand population area. Lahore. It is very just near Lahore. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. a very impoverished uh, locality. Mm -hmm. That's where we are starting. And uh, let me add that that we are looking at a bigger plan of God, because we can identify where these localities are, where these people are who are especially the uh, people in the far-flung villages where these people are being crushed. But you know, as it is in the Bible, that we are persecuted, but not forsaken. That's right, yeah. Yeah. We are stuck and, down, uh, but not destroyed. Not destroyed. So, w they are not forsaken. And as LTNI, we want to build those small uh, bridges where their children can go and learn about Jesus and basically thrive in their faith and on the other hand have the secular education mm -hmm. and build their families. Mm. And that's what LTNI is working for. And moreover, we are working on the religious freedom and uh, 
human rights, promotion of rel religious freedom and uh, re human rights all over the world for the persecuted church. Mm. And LT and I, I just was, I was trying to figure out what you were saying. That's love thy neighbor in, 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 in yeah. oh. short form. Yes. Yeah. So that's good. Um, so tell me, how did you get that? Wh where did this heart to help people? Where did it come from? You're from Pakistan. Yes. Uh, you were a major in the army. Yes, uh, I, um, I did uh, my service for uh, Pakistan when I was a young man. Um, uh, but there were a couple of things in my life which really uh, took me to this path. I think initially when I accepted Christ, one, one of the reasons while growing up, I was by the way the eldest of the four children in my family and very humble beginning. Which part of Pakistan were you from? Um, I was born and raised in Lahore. Lahore, okay. Yeah. And educated as well at Foreman Christian College. I don't know whether you have ever No, I've heard been to of Karachi, it. but I know <laughs> Pastor Peter has been to Lahore, but yes. I, I've been to Karachi. Yes. So, so uh, however, my initial beginning was, a my faith was a little bit uh, mixed up because uh, my father was one of the pioneers of the Assemblies of God movement in Pakistan. And I went on a, on a Sundays, I went to the Assemblies of God church, whereas um, every rest on the working days, I went to school, which was a Catholic missionary school. Mm -hmm. So I had a, I really didn't, didn't understand uh, what the faith was for me. But while I was training in the army, I, I, an incident happened which really turned me around. And that was that just before graduation, 40, uh, about 50 of our uh, cadets, we went on a weekend trip to a hill station. On the way back, it was pitch dark night, about 10.30 at night. Uh, the, it was a hilly road, slippery, it was raining, and the bus we were traveling, it um, turned and it fell in a ravine. Now what happened was I was sitting on the, almost on the back end of the bus, and as the bus turned and flipped, the first tumble it took, the backside of the, um, uh, the roof opened, and hand of God just literally picked me out of the bus and I fell just about 10 to 15 feet down the road hmm. and rest of the bus it tumbled down and went 300 feet oh, wow. 18 of the of the cadets died right there and then I broke my arm left arm and I have uh, scars to prove it and I just uh, dragged myself up on the road and the help came in a, while, in a little while and I was transferred to the hospital. Now, I was the only Christian in that bus. And that uh, incident really, it made me think as a young man at the age of 20, why, did it, why wh was I not those which went down and died? Why did God uh, save me? And that was the reason. And then within the next few months, I went home and my father and another pastor ministered me and um, I accepted Lord for the first time. And that's what, and then I continue to walk and then things happened. I got married, had uh, my daughter Serena and uh, Lord brought me here. Here, another major incident happened. I mean, God really moved me up in the food chain uh, here. I had a good job. But in 2005, I had kidney failures and I lost both my kidneys. I was on dialysis. Then in 2006, I didn't know God had this arrangement. Uh, we had arranged marriage and uh, no relation to my wife, but she offered to donate her kidney. And in 2000, August 2006, August 31st, I had my kidney transplant. And uh, this is six years. And this was the, really the turning point in our life. Hmm. That, you know, then we started seeking out, okay, God, what does really you want? So instead of going back to a good paying job, God said, no, we need you to focus over there now. Hmm. So a few families got together and we said, okay, this is what desire is. And also, as, as, as uh, you know, our Lord is a king and we are in his kingdom. And those are the kingdom colonies. Those are the citizens of our, uh, that kingdom. And we need to work 
support those kids. So that's so, yeah. a sort of a nutshell of story. Now you donated your kidney before you were married? Is that right? Oh no. Oh, no. after you were married, okay. 2006, uh, six, yeah. I'm talking about. That's yeah. just... Uh, six years six ago. Six years oh, ago. Okay. Today, almost. You almost. were a perfect match for yes. you? Well, it's a miracle. It's God's plan. It's nothing to do with me. It's Him. Hmm. Glory to Him. Because what we went through, step by step, he continued to be faithful and he brought to us to this stage. It is his plan, saving us, giving us health and doing something what he wants us to do. So this is how. And uh, if you, I grew up in a Christian village and uh, Christian family with the background of, with a missionary background and uh, lo my father was murdered when I was very, very young. Mm, sorry to hear that. What, how, how did that happen? Well, he was a man of integrity. He was a man of principle. He was the man who loved God. He was helping somebody, some orphans. And the feudal system and other people didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And he was murdered. And uh, after his murder, I was sent to boarding school where I met Miss Cox. She was a British lady missionary who was friends with my father. And uh, she took me into her care. And uh, I was young, around seven, and, uh, seven or eight years old. And uh, she, I had many questions about the tenants of Christianity. At that tender age, I was pondering about Trinity. And uh, she said, well, we'll talk about it. She fasted for three days, and then she took me into fourth day, she took me into a chapel. And we sat in a corner, and we spent all day talking about faith. And from then onward, my faith grew. I loved Jesus. I continued growing in the knowledge of Jesus. And I was, I witnessed everywhere, hmm. wherever I go. Hmm. And you know, that's you, it's interesting you mentioned that because as you were mentioning before, Pastor Peter has conducted a lot of evangelistic outreaches in Pakistan and the reception has always been quite positive. Uh, people mm -hmm. receiving Jesus. And yeah. So how did you, you, you began a witnessing about Jesus. How, how, what was the response like for you? For me, at that time period, it was mostly you witness by your uh, uh, deeds. You, you are in that country. Mm. You can't go openly, and, but whosoever is willing to listen, I would not shy. <laughs> That's very I good. would tell. Yeah. And mostly it was that people want to hear. Because when they see Jesus, if you are real, they want to know what you have. That's right, that's right. So true. Yeah. So that's how throughout my career in the, over there, I witnessed him, high places, down places, everywhere. Hmm. It's, it's him who takes you where. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, he has plans for us. Amen. And now you're doing this a project, Project James 28, James 28 project. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, James 2 8 project is, is the same project, what we are talking about this, um, uh, the primary, Christian primary school and the health, and the, um, health clinic. But the James 2 8 benefit is an evening we are having on uh, November 30th. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would actually love you and the audience to... Yeah, I think the information uh, the is there on the screen. Thank you for inviting <laughs> us. I, our invitation is on the screen. Yes, Where is it? Uh, it's going to be at the Grand Olympia Banquet Hall. It's uh, Stony Creek. That's between Hamilton and Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. And actually, Peter Younger, uh, he had a church in, uh, he has a church in Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. here. So it's right in the middle, right very the, close to that. And, and so it's on are, November 30th. November 30th. At um, uh, 6.30 is the, with the reception and 7.30 is the dinner. It's a Friday evening. Come and join us, celebrate the evening, and also celebrate this 
this work which God is uh, asking us to do. Uh, our uh, keynote speaker is Michael Coran. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas uh, we have a band, uh, sorry, a Christian uh, band which is flying in from England, mm -hmm. and this will be their first performance. So it'll be a big in, night. It will be a big night, and uh, we hope you and the viewers can call us. Um, and I think the our, number is on, was on the screen, or is it a website? I think. Yes, we have our website, yeah, which is called uh, www. Yeah. Love thy neighbor international dot com. So we just go and there and the find the information. Yes, and the neighbor is the Canadian spellings. N E I G H B O U R, not B O R. All right. And um, uh, you can also purchase tickets over there, or you can call us at 289 308 7894 for more information or buy the tickets. And if somebody lives, obviously we have viewers from BC to Newfoundland, uh, if they want to get involved but can't come that night, all the information is on the website, I assume? Yes, all the information is on the website. And here is the thing, you know, it's a, um, if we want everybody to pray for us, mm -hmm. because it's a tangible thing, you know, Lord, our Lord, Jesus Christ, hears our prayers. And um, uh, in the physical realms, things happen. Just like you, you were mentioning a little while ago that you let the Christ big in the, uh, be big in your life. Be big, and, yes. You know, you watch your bank accounts or your health or anything. Mm -hmm. He is going to make he is going to make those changes. So we also believe that he hears our prayer. Secondly, is um, uh, since we are uh, the viewers and the listeners, and uh, sorry, the audience are, are aware of this. Uh, a situation about the initiatives, what's happening over there, I think they need to inform others as well. Mm -hmm. They need to, um, maybe we have uh, wonderful speakers within, presenters within our organization, they can come and meet them, at the, whether at the church or uh, friends or um, any organizations, we can come and present them. And the last thing is, Every initiative needs money. Now, we believe this vision has been given by God. Faith in action. Faith in action. Mm -hmm. And so they can go to our website. Again, it's available yes. um, on the screen. Please yeah. go there and you can click. You can see the project as well. Mm -hmm. You can go to Indiegogo and uh, you can... Uh, All right. Uh, and actually on Indiegogo, just to... Uh, say that you can when you donate we have a lot of incentives whether to get the tickets or uh, t-shirts. Good, so we'll go we check all those out. The, way, the yeah. producer's waving at me. We have to go to a, a, a message from our announcer. Just stay with me. We'll be back. You know, it is a privilege. I've had the privilege of talking to uh, our guests today from Pakistan, and we've been focusing on there. Um, as we mentioned, we saw in the clip, Pastor Peter has had incredible campaigns in Pakistan, taking the gospel there, and what a, what a response we've seen. But you know what? It's only possible through your support, uh, and we get to, you and I get to be a part of that. And so I want to thank you today for uh, going to your telephone, giving your very best, or you can go to our website, uh, gracetelevision.net, uh, and give in a safe, secure manner. Uh, but these campaigns do not happen uh, without our support, your and my support, uh, sending Pastor Peter, sending the missions teams. Uh, but we get the joy of knowing that where he goes, where our missions team go, there we go as well. Uh, and just like the, the men and women of faith who have gone before us, as we saw the announcer say, uh, when we give to these great missions campaigns, we're there with, with our money. Our money, where our money goes, there we go as well. Uh, and remember this, God blesses those who give. He, he pours out a blessing in Jesus Christ. Those who sow generously also reap generously. Uh, so take, thank you so much for going to your t uh, phone. Our Grace Prayer Center is here for you. Uh, and we have a few closing moments. I just want to say thank you to our guests for being here with us today. Uh, you mentioned that on your website you have a special package of how people can get involved in working with the government, taking advantage of certain uh, opportunities that they have to help people. Uh, so that's yeah. on your website as well. Is that correct, sir? That's, that's true. Yeah. And uh, if you go on, my web on our website, just just click on how you can help how and there's a help. sample letter, print it, send it to your MPs and that will uh, let them know that we want our tax dollars to be used judiciously to help and bring focus that. towards the Christians oh, who good. are suffering. Let's make, take advantage of our opportunities. Thank you, Vincent, thank, for being uh, thank, here today. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Phoebe, thank as you well. Very much, God Nathan. bless you in all your work. Thank you for tuning in today. It's been a great program. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Remember, the Grace Prayer Center is here for you. You're loved, you're blessed, and Jesus Christ is with you today. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.
You're watching Grace TV, building your gospel voice to the world.